Hello and welcome. My name is Francisco, and in this video, we are going to learn the filter method. We are going to build a search bar so that we may search for something. Then we'll use the filter method and compare that to our search query so that we may output only the data that we are searching for. We're going to be starting with data already displayed in our DOM. If you don't know how to use the fetch method and the map method to get and display data in your DOM, I will be linking part one and part two of the series down in the comments so that you may get familiar with that. This video will be assuming that you already know how to fetch data and how to map data and display that data in your DOM. The purpose of this video is to teach you how to build search functionality in your website, meaning we're going to be adding a search bar. And when you enter a name or letters into the search bar, the results that you see below will be filtered. To do this, we're going to be using the filter method. Let's take a look at our index file. We have a basic boilerplate with a heading and a division element with the ID of display data. We've added an input element. Please note that we have the ID attribute with a value of input on this input element. We're going to be using that here in scripts.js. I've placed our input element using the variable input. Then I use the method query selector to go and grab that element. To store our search results, we'll create a variable. We'll call it query and its value will be whatever we have typed into the search bar. I want us to see what is stored in our query variable as we go through this tutorial. So I am going to console log it. It makes it easier to learn when you can see what is going on in every step of the way. As of now, the page has loaded, but query equals nothing because we haven't typed anything into our search bar. Our filter method will go in between our payload variable. As a reminder, the payload attribute holds our users in an array. And then the map method maps through that array and displays our users in our DOM. We'll add the filter method in between these two so that we can take in all of the results, filter only the ones we want, and spit those out to our map method. The filter method is easy, don't let it intimidate you. Inside the parentheses, we'll create an arrow function. The filter method takes in a parameter and this parameter represents all of the data that is coming in. We'll call it event data. Back to our function in here, we'll create an if and else if statement. Our if statement will state if query, remember query hold our search results equals to a blank string. Please notice that we used three equal signs. The three equal signs represents a strict equals. So if query equals an empty string, meaning there's nothing typed into our search bar, then we are going to return our event data. However, if there is something in our search results, then we are going to return data that matches our search results. To do this, we'll use a few methods. First, we'll take our event data. Out of that event data, we're going to take only the name property. Then we will convert this to all lowercase using the to lowercase method. The reason we add this is just in case your user is searching using cap locks, you won't come across any bugs because the code will convert it to lowercase and then compare it to our data also converted in lowercase. Now, if our event data dot name convert it to lowercase includes now, if all parameters are met, then we will return our event data, but only the event data that matched our search results. Let's take a quick pause and see what we have so far. If I type something in to our search, will it appear? So I'll type LEA for the first Leanne and nothing is being filtered down in our console log. We are not seeing a query updated. But if I refresh, 
well, you'll see that now we have Leanne being filtered and that is the only one being displayed because it's the only one that includes LEA. And if we look down at our console, we'll see that I'm console logging query. So right now query, AKA our search results equals LEA. The way that filter works is that it's going to filter anything that matches your search result and not in that order. So what do I mean? I'm going to filter just the letter L. I refresh. You'll see down here that query equals L and in our results, we have all users that have the letter L in their name. Right now, we're having to refresh the page ourselves every time we want this to update. Let's use JavaScript to take care of this for us. Let's think what needs to happen. Every time our users type in a letter into the search bar, the result should update. To do this, we'll use our input variable. Remember, this is our search bar and we'll add an event listener to it. We'll listen for an input change. And whenever our input changes, we'll fire up a function. In this function, we'll simply call our display users function. And now every time we type something into our search bar, the add event listener method will call our display users function. When display users fires up again, it will use the map method to again display our data into our DOM. But because we have something typed into our search bar, query will equal something different. This will help the filter method filter only the data that we want to display. Thank you for watching. To help support this channel, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.